Hey everyone, um, I have decided to do a really highly requested video on this is on foundations that I would recommend and that I use on bridal work so it would of course be good for photography and wedding makeup or any place where you're going to have your photo taken with a flash basically so you know if you had an event or a red carpet event or something and like that. The main thing to remember when worrying about photography is that you do want to consider flashback and the main things that will cause flashback on camera and that means that when the light bounces off your face from the camera flash that it is reflected back into the camera and you're just left with this weird white cast and then your body looks darker so what causes that is usually sunblock ingredients in your foundation so uh, SPF so that's usually like titanium, di titanium dioxide and a few other ingredients like that. I comfortably use foundations with an SPF of up to like 15 usually but this can be trial and error. Some foundations for some reason will just flash back more than others so it's up to you to just try them on yourselves, get a sample and take a photo and see how it works. Anyhow, so this is a mixture of high-end and low-end. I use all of these uh, pretty much in my kit for bridal work and I'm going to start off with I'd say what has been my most used foundation since I started working um, in makeup and it would be the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. So this one is a um, semi-matte or like a natural matte foundation. The best foundations as well in photography I found are, find are the ones that are not too matte so they're not going to be too flat and they're not shiny so you want something in between. This is on the lower end so the matter end of it but it still gives a nice finish. It's quite a natural matte. It has an SPF of 15 but I just find it photographs beautifully and you will find that a lot of makeup artists do use this for their work. This comes in an amazing shade range and I think that's one of the better things about this. Also MAC, particularly in Ireland, is not the most expensive of the high-end brands so it's quite affordable. And then this is a medium buildable coverage and I think the thing that some people get wrong about like the more full coverage foundations is that they think they need to heat put on which you don't. It's full coverage by itself so you don't or medium buildable or whatever so you don't need to pop on loads. I find Put on one layer of this and then it's literally just to go over any areas that you need a little bit more coverage with a second layer once the first layer is kind of settled. So this is a fantastic one I find for photography. Then another MAC one and this is a newer MAC one, it's the Matchmaster. Again this is an SPF of 15. This has a similar finish actually to the Studio Fix. That's why I think it's really good for photography. It has a natural matte finish. This though is skin adapting so it'll adapt to your skin tone in that when the light penetrates the actual formula it has what um, is described as like see-through or transparent spheres in the, in the formula that allow the skin to kind of the light to bounce off your natural skin tone to kind of show its own colour so it doesn't really matter whether you're warm or cool toned. I would avoid very dry skin with this. Same with the Studio Fix Fluid. If you're extremely dry I would avoid it. Anything from like normal to dry though is fine as long as you really prep the skin well it's just the very very dry skin types that I would avoid. This is one of the better ones for photography because there's absolutely no SPF in it. This is the face and body. It comes in two sizes. This is just the smaller 50ml size. This is a long lasting very low coverage foundation but as you can manipulate the actual uh, foundation itself to control the coverage you get from it. So this one is water resistant, it's really good, it resists sweating and all that kind of stuff. Now it does kind of give a little bit of a glow to the skin I find so if you're very oily I would avoid it and it does need to be powdered well in any kind of shiny areas but it contains film formers um, and these are what makes it last really long. Now also the film formers are what can make it thicken up. So when I said you can kind of control the coverage of this, it comes out very, very watery. You definitely need to shake it up really, really well. But if you pop it onto your hand and then really rub it together very, very well, like cause a lot of friction, that'll get those film formers working and it'll thicken up the formula. So then you can go ahead and press that into your clients or your brides or whatever's face and you get better coverage that way. Like it'll actually turn into a thicker liquid doing that. Or what you could do is just pour it out onto your little worktop or whatever you're using as your little palette. And then literally after about five minutes, it'll start to thicken itself in the um, in the air so this is a really really good one you can do a lot with it 
You would um, require a concealer for any blemishes and stuff like that, obviously. Then the other, other MAC one that I really like, and this one I really like for very dry skin. Again, it's an SPF of 15. It's the Studio Sculpt Foundation. This is one that I didn't like initially. It is a very misunderstood foundation, and the trick is less is more. That's all you can say. It is applied beautifully with hands as well. Really work it into the skin. Avoid very oily skin types with this. It definitely needs to be set with powder if you want it to make sure it lasts and it doesn't transfer and maybe to avoid if it has a little bit too much of a sheen um, if you're oily in any areas on the skin or you know maybe less dry in any areas of the skin but again it does photograph beautifully for say more normal to dry skin types. Other foundations I have been using in the last few months and I've really fallen in love with this guy it's the number seven stay perfect foundation this one retails for 20 euro, I think, in Ireland. But it's a very long lasting one. It photographs really, really lovely. It has quite a lot of silicone. Most of the ones I find that photograph really well and last really well tend to be quite silicone heavy. This one, it just gives a really beautiful, kind of soft look to the skin. It's not very, very obvious or very heavy looking on the skin by any means. And I really love, again, it's kind of more of a natural finish that it gives to the skin it's not very dewy or very matte or anything like that but it's a really lovely one that i use a lot and it comes with the pump this one is arguably high end or low end i think it's somewhere in between it's one of the vichy foundations it's the air taunt pure foundation i have harped on about this a million times before um it has an spf of 12 in it or is it 18 i can't remember but the it photographs beautiful i've never um had a flashback from this that i've noticed and it's a long lasting foundation again it is a 12 hour foundation what i love about this is that it really looks like your skin when it's on it's really not that expensive either it is a natural finish one so it's not too shiny not too dry this one is the one for normal combination skin you can get this for dry skin as well so it'll come with two different formulas which is great yeah i really like the finish it gives as well so that's another fantastic foundation again about 20 euro in ireland then I'm just going to add these in because I know for a fact and from research and from seeing on the internet and hearing from other makeup artists that these are amazing for bridal work. I just haven't used them on brides yet because I only just got them. But the Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation, I've tried it on my own skin and it just gives, like again, it's not matte, it's not dewy, it's a nice something in between. But it contains zero sunblock so it's perfect for photography it is extremely extremely silicone heavy that works really lovely for giving an extremely smooth look to the skin it's not very very obvious on the skin yet it gives quite good coverage and i'm sure you've all heard about these foundations they would definitely be good ones to look at when it comes to um photography and then another Illamasqua one that i really like is the light liquid foundation again, again because it has almost no sunblock it might have the teeniest tiniest amount of titanium dioxide in it but not enough that it would qualify as sunblock so this one is quite a light to medium coverage i'd say and um, it wouldn't be suitable for very oily skin so it's nice in that it's quite moisturizing but it's not greasy or shiny the skin base foundation i should have said would be great for kind of in between skins nothing too over drying nothing too overly oily another high-end foundation that i really like for photography is this smashbox studio skin 15 hour wear foundation again it's one of those really long ones this one is formulated specifically for photo shoots again it's quite silicone heavy it is oil free it's just a really lovely your kind of skin finish but better kind of foundation again and um it's lovely so any of those ones that are formulated formulated particularly for photography obviously would be brilliant the one that annoys the crap out of me is the is it the revlon photo ready foundation yeah that has such a misleading name to it because it contains extremely shimmery particles and it does not photo well some lower end foundations now and two of my favorite would be from the bourgeois healthy mix line so this is the healthy mix foundation the normal one and this is the healthy mix serum because they are bourgeois and lower end they only cost about 16 euro here in ireland they contain no sunblock as far as I know. They're both 16 hour wear. They are a radiant foundations, but they are not particularly oily looking or like matte looking. They I think they're both a semi matte finish or a demi matte finish is what they say. This one will give a tiny bit more of a sheen. This one will add a little bit more shine control. So for your normal to oily skins, go for this guy and normal to dry skins, go for this guy. Both are absolutely beautiful on the skin. Yeah, they're called half matte foundations this guy here which is the bourgeois healthy mix serum is an absolute 
total replica of the um, Chanel Pro Lumiere, as most people know, the one that was discontinued. It's just a beautiful foundation. This um, Bourjois are owned by Chanel as well, or rather they're both under the same umbrella, so they're both under the same crowd. Then a couple of other lower end brands, the Max Factor Ageless Elixir Serum. This will definitely be more for the drier kind of skin types, but it gives the most beautiful finish to the skin. And as long as it's powdered nicely, and you would powder this one um, because it kind of has a bit of a creamy consistency, um, it just it looks beautiful on the skin and it photographs really, really well. This um, gives extremely good coverage for what it is also, so it's better for anyone who wants the slightly more coverage to their skin. Then two kind of bog standard lower end foundations that I think are really good and I found that both of these photograph extremely well and they're very affordable. You have your Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Foundation. This is transfer proof, hydrating and lightweight feel. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it says. Anytime I wear this, this actually just lasts all day. The colour is a bit dark on me so I don't wear it only if I'm wearing a scarf or else I'd bring it down onto my neck but it's a really good long lasting foundation and I do like the finish it gives it's not too matte um, again it's kind of a semi matte foundation and then we have the L'Oreal True Match super blending super blendable perfecting foundation this matches your colour and texture this has no SPF in it and it's not too heavy it just really goes on lovely on the skin it's like again a second skin it's a really really nice foundation particularly for the price tag and I used to use this a lot before you know being so overwhelmed with loads of other foundations but that's another lovely one. A couple of foundations that I don't have on me in person now but I have used in the past. The Makeup Forever Face and Body is an absolutely beautiful foundation. It works very very similar to this guy. It's a bit more of a jelly kind of gel consistency but if the finish is very similar to this guy. Um, it is water resistant, lasts for a long time, gives a beautiful, beautiful finish to the skin. Not the heaviest coverage by any means, but if you can get your hands on that one, do. And then also the HD foundation by Makeup Forever. It's another really, really nice foundation and it does photograph pretty well um, as well. So as I was mentioning before about with those, say, face and body foundations, they're very, very low coverage. So you would need a separate concealer for blemishes. Say MAC do that studio finish concealer, which I love. And I, even though it has an SPF of 35 in it, I've never found it a big issue, but if you were to go for the MAC Full Coverage Foundation, this has the pretty much exact same formula as that studio finish foundation with the exception of two ingredients, I think. And one of those ingredients is that there's no SPF in this. So use something like this as your concealer so that there'll be no flashback. This as well can work as a beautiful foundation but I find these cream foundations um, first of all you can't use them too thick because they'll look really obvious on the skin so you do need to shear them down by either mixing them with primers or just watering them down like with using a damp sponge but you kind of need to have good skin for that so that's what I would say for that and um, this is definitely a great one to have cream foundations do tend to photograph extremely extremely well two concealers that I adore for use in photography the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, I there'd be so many weddings where I literally just use the face and body and the Pro Longwear Concealer together and that's what I'll use on every member of the bridal party and it's just perfect. For someone who is a little bit more on the oily side, I might use the Select Cover Up by MAC. This has a slightly more matte finish. Again, they don't have an SPF and I really love the flawless kind of finish it'll give so I'll just use a smaller um, fluffy brush and buff it over usually the central areas like around the nose and stuff like that down around the eyes um, and then just put it anywhere where you need a little bit more coverage but that's another brilliant one and I used this guy at a wedding there at the weekend and it looked beautiful this is the Ben Nye Total Coverall Wheel um, it has no sunblock in it. It's wax based so it lasts really well on the skin. So that's another really good one. And then the last thing really to say would be make sure you go for um, a powder that doesn't reflect light. So don't go for anything that has shimmer in it or anything like that obviously. A couple of my favourite powders to use would be this Clinique um, Invisible Blend Powder. This is just gorgeous on the skin. It photographs beautifully. It's one of my favourite ones at the moment. One of my all time favourite ones of course, the one I use the most would be the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. I also use my Bourjois Unifying Powder, the Healthy Balance Unifying Powder. I use that an awful lot. That is um, a good dupe for the MAC 
care blend powder which is another beautifully uh, beautiful one for photographing and then if your client or the bride or whoever has really oily skin go for a black powder mac black powder works perfectly the only thing i would say is try and avoid those hd white powder uh setting powders you know the ones that are, are literally white powder they're usually silica they um some flash back more than others but it's not really worth the risk i have had times where say even with the mac one i've used it on a couple of people and it looked fine but i might have used it on someone else with a certain maybe who had like dryer patches or something like that and it flashed back like it looked like i threw flour over their head so you have to be really really careful always check it as well before the day so i would nearly always get the bride to take a flash photograph of herself on on the night of the trial or at the trial just to see how it looks and um, other than that there's not too much more I think I can say so I hope this was helpful and if you have any more questions just leave them below and I'll do my best to try and answer them for you so thanks for me for watching guys and I'll chat to you really soon. Slán!